Hi, Paul Clark here, cricketanalysis.org, and this is a sneak preview of the new scoring metrics that we're going to be using. Um, I won't go into the, too much of the detail here, but what it does, it uses a variation on the gilly factor to give a ranking to a batsman score, um, which is his run rate and, and the amount of runs he scores in the game. And bowling, um, that depends on when the wicket was taken and who the wicket is that you get out. So if you get a good batsman out early, it's better than getting a good batsman out late. In fact, early wickets count for more than late wickets, given that there's only 20 overs anyway. And if the batsman scored and is well set, it's worth more than a batsman that isn't scored and well set. That's the basics of it, and uh, there's a little bit of maths underneath. Um, but I just did it for the England-Sri Lanka game that's just completed, the really exciting game, Alex Hale scoring um, uh, 116 of 64 balls. And with those weightings, we've got the scores here. And the scores, uh, the three main players here is Alex Hales comes out on top with a weighted score of 142.3. The next uh, most uh, valuable player isn't a, isn't Jai Wardner. Uh, and I probably would agree with this. It would be uh, Kulara Sekera, who took four wickets, four top England wickets. He got out um, Lum, Ali, Morgan and Butler. So he, he took two wickets in the first over, which is vital. That should have set England right back. Traditionally, a side that loses two wickets in early in the power play very rarely go on to score 160 runs or more. So, And that would have been a comfortable win for um, Sri Lanka. But then he followed that up by getting Morgan out when he was set and getting Butler, who's been one of the most consistent T20 batsmen for England in the last 18 months, out very early as well. He was the only wicket taker for Sri Lanka. So it's quite right... I know there's a heavy batting bias among the people that uh, speak to me, but it's quite right as far as I'm concerned that uh, Cully here gets 120.42. He's closely followed by Jai Wardner, 108. Then there's some uh, odd ones here. Uh, Dernback uh, gets a better score than Dilshan. Dernback 66.71. Why? Well, he got both of the Sri Lankan openers, and he didn't go for, although he didn't go for as many runs as some. He didn't go for as many runs as Mendis or, or indeed Bresnan. He went for a little bit above average. He's lost some runs for his defence. He's lost some points for his defensive bowling here. At some points, he lost 3.46 on his defensive score. But he's gained um, those two wickets means his overall score is 66.71. Um, the worst players, well, the worst players here were Mendis, who took no wicket for 52. And Bresnan, who took no wicket for 48, both getting quite sizable minor scores. So, you know, if they'd have had a bat and scored some runs, they might have helped to um, jug that up a little bit. So that's roughly how it goes. I'd love to have your thoughts on that, whether you think that's um, realistic or not. There are some weightings involved here. What I'm trying to do is value batting the same as bowling. I'm not trying to do, make any judgments, but over, over hundreds of games... Uh, with, with batting side and bowling sides, trying to rank them out roughly the same. So a batsman isn't intrinsically worth more than a bowler. It's just a case of, uh, of um, trying to work out what that weighting should be to give realistic results. And then adding them up and then extrapolating this over every T20 game and every IPL game and every T20 international game to see who what player provides the most value. And then probably giving a dollar value to this to see for those of you that do IPL fantasy leagues and that to see what who the best players in terms of value are in the IPL and all that will be done so we're going to be getting a load of data from the, all the previous IPLs probably all the previous T20 internationals and when we've rolled that out and we've worked out what we're doing and we've tweaked the metrics and the weightings a little bit to get this as perfect as we can and probably added some more we'll roll it out to 50 over cricket possibly test cricket as well afterwards so we really get some ideas so this is what we sort of said we were going to be doing in terms of providing really good um, actionable information to you guys which is in context so not only will we have every match laid out like this sorry it's a static screen it's a bit boring not only will we have every match laid out like this but we'll have this for each player each player will have their own statistical board match by match trends what they contribute with the bat what they contribute with the ball we'll have fielding KPIs put in it at some point as well um, and then what that would equate to against the average player in terms of dollar value should be up for an IPL or big bash auction or whatever else is going on so that's the idea that's the mid-term goal I'm not really looking at getting that completed 
before the next six months the idea is that everything's in place uh, before the 50 over World Cup in 2015 so I've got just a bit less than a year to get it all sorted out but I want it to be moving I want some real traction in the in sort of the next six or eight weeks so this is where we are now uh, a lot more code to write a lot more spreadsheets to get together a lot more data to scrape and put together as well but uh, thanks for your indulgence Paul Clark at cricketanalysis.org signing off <laughs>